Hi, I'm Brett, and today we've got a really good opportunity to show you the difference between Subaru's new engine technology and well, it's effectively their old technology, but incredibly this engine is very similar to what's in the MY15 STI. This is the FA20 engine, which is the engine in the BRZ and Toyota 86, normally aspirated, but at the moment this is about to go into the project car for ROH, which is now fully built. This particular engine is a uh, major engine upgrade, over $20,000 worth of modifications. It's an STI MY12 with dual AVCS, uh, heaps of internal mods, which is another good example of what can be done to this car. But what we wanted to talk about today is the difference between the two engines from a technology point of view. And then um, I'll do a separate video to explain to you the intimate details between these two engines. So I get my cameraman to come up a little bit closer because this engine being Subaru's new direct engine, direct injection technology um, it's got a lot of different components we spoke about that on other videos in the past but you can see the engine bare beside the other one but it forms the basis of both the engine in its normally aspirated form which comes out in the BRZ the Toyota 86 Subaru's new Impreza normally aspirated say for example uh, Subaru XV and the Subaru Impreza normally aspirated but also it's just recently come out um, in another derivative with the current model Subaru MY15 WRX. It's been out since last year in the Subaru Forester XT and also in Japan as well as um, in Europe in the legacy two, two litre direct injection engine. Now these engines, some of them come with um, all different configuration heads, but a lot of them use a common block with different compression ratios. For example, BRZ uses 12 and a half to one compression ratio whereas um, Subaru XV in its turbo application is nine and a half, I think it's either nine and a half to one or 10 and a half to one. Um, the normally aspirated uh, XV engine has got port injectors with different um, tumble valve generators built into the inlet manifold, whereas the WRX MY15 engine is 100% direct injection with no port injectors, whereas in between you've got the, WR, the BRZ, which has got uh, direct injectors as well as port injectors, but no tumble generator valves built into the inlet manifold. Of course, um, what is really common, and I'm sure you want a lot to know, is what can you do to the FA20 engine in the BRZ? Well, I'll get my cameraman to come up a little bit closer. This particular engine has now been put back together. It's got a GFB aluminium crankshaft pulley to give it a little bit more throttle response. The um, auxiliary drive belt runs around the front here for all the auxiliary components such as power, or well not power steer because some of these cars have electric power steer, but air conditioning and alternator. The inlet manifold sits on here and of course on this particular engine as you can see in our other videos, um, it'll have the Sprintec supercharger inlet manifold with the compressor on the top and then down underneath here we're about to fit the um, exhaust manifold with the turbo because this engine runs um, twin charge. Internally inside this engine it's got modified heads to flow a lot more grunt because our target power now is well above 200 kilowatts at the wheels. You can see in our previous videos what we've achieved with this car. It's got modified valve springs, modified retainers, um, different port configuration, highly flowed heads. The things you have to remember when you're running high boost on these normally aspirated cars, other than the compression ratio, is they get a lot of valve float because the valve springs are not designed for uh, forced induction and then at high RPM you get valve float and that's why they break locker arms. So if you're looking at chasing big grunt through your BRZ or Toyota, Toyota 86, this is something that you need to be aware of. Internally in this engine we've showed you before some still photos of some of our other project cars, similar to this, um, with forged pistons and heavy duty rods because they've got an offset rod um, configuration. The engine is not designed for high uh, boost application so when you start changing, chasing a lot of grunt you need to seriously consider aftermarket pistons and rods and typically what we then do is we run a lower comp piston similar to the compression ratio of a turbo Forester or a turbo WRX MY15 um, and that then allows you more durability, reliability and performance. On the, you just notice the difference between this engine and this engine has got an aluminium timing cover whereas this has got a plastic timing cover and of course down underneath you've got a lot more ancillaries for external um, for the water pump. This one's got the water pump for the Sprintec supercharger system still mounted on the front. Of course you'll notice the um, oil filter is, is mounted on the top of the engine now. Now we're about to fit an aftermarket oil cooler to this car. Um, I'll get my cameraman to come up a little bit closer because one of the things that you'll notice between this engine and the Subaru turbo engine is down underneath here 
This engine's got a heat exchanger built into the water system which cools the oil as it runs through the oil filter. Whereas the normally aspirated um, FA20 engine doesn't have it. Now interestingly, the turbo engine does. And it's quite straightforward to fit a kit to this engine um, which looks almost original factory standard to give you the advantage of dropping the oil temperature because if you drive one of these cars really hard at the track, even in normally aspirated um, configuration, you can actually end up with oil temperatures well over 130 degrees centigrade. Now that's not necessarily bad for the engine, but you're starting to get into an area where you start having a lot more heat load on your radiator system and it takes a little bit longer for the engine to cool down when you're either on the track or coming off the track. And some of these um, oil cooler kits are actually quite straightforward, particularly using genuine Subaru parts because they look neat, they bolt on tidy, and they're very easy to fit. So from our ROH engine configuration point of view, that's all I want to talk about now. You'll get some more video updates shortly um, with the install of this car and then finally when it goes on the dyno. This has been a really great project car for us. We've now done quite a few of these twin charge kits and this one being a built engine, we're looking for some really good results. We've got a much bigger uh, supercharger which has already been fitted to the inlet manifold that's ready to bolt on. We're gonna run E-Flex which allows us to run uh, E85 or any combination of 98 octane fuel with the system built and configured through the factory ECU using Epitech tuning software. And um, this will be probably on the dyno over the next couple of weeks. So of course, you know where to follow us, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Um, send us an email, make a comment here on our video channel. Love to hear back from you. But for today, I'm Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.